Breakfast Bible Bites, Part 2. Is the candy cane really about the passion of Christ? The Christmas narrative is a story that most Christians should already be familiar with, but there are two inclusive stories that seem to have lost their message through the secularization of the Christmas celebration. And in the next few Breakfast Bible Bites, I would like to take a few moments to share them with you. The first is an object which we have all come to enjoy at Christmas, but over time, the candy cane has lost its significance in the message of Christ. If you don't know the narrative of the candy cane, after this, once you understand its origin, I'm sure you will never again look at this Christmas treat in the same way. The tale begins with a humble candy maker in Indiana who wanted to make a candy that would represent symbolically God's special Christmas gift of the King of Kings to his creation. So he developed the candy cane. In its construction, he incorporated several well understood symbols about the birth, ministry, and death of Jesus Christ. He began with a stick of pure, hard, white candy to symbolize the purity of the virgin birth as well as the sinless nature of our Christ. He made it hard because the church is built on the solid rock of Christ Jesus our Lord and the firmness of the Word of God, for the God's promises are established on a firm foundation of his word. He probably wanted to form it in the letter J to represent the uh, precious name of Jesus, a name that is above all names, a name who came to this earth as our Savior. Additionally, it represents the staff of the Good Shepherd, with which he reaches down into the ditches of the world, lifting out the fallen lambs. That's you and me, by the way, for we are all like sheep that have gone astray. Then he added three small red stripes to represent the scourging that Jesus suffered on his way to the cross, and one large red stripe, the color of his blood, shed to appease God's wrath against our sin, making a way for the reconciliation of willing and submissive souls. When we see the a red, broad, soul-cleansing stripe that covers our sin debt, it will remind those of us with eyes to see and ears to hear about his tasting death on our behalf so that we may attain eternal life. The candy cane in the eyes of its originator would be a gift of love that would tell Jesus' story, the greatest story ever told. But like so much of the Christmas message, the candy cane over time has lost its true meaning. It is now seen as a mere Christmas decoration. But the meaning is still there for those of us who have ears to hear and eyes to see. In Revelation 2, 7, we read, Let anyone who has ears to hear listen to what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who conquers, I will give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God.